This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Guys, look, Raid has put together a Christmas gift for all new players through holiday season, so get ready to celebrate the 12 days of Raid. Just download Raid from the link below. Copy your player ID from in-game, then go to 12daysofraid.tlarium.com to get holiday-themed Raid champions and even Amazon gift card worth up to $1,000. MMA fans, Ronda Rousey is now your very own Raid champion. She's a real threat on the battlefield with a bunch of multi-hit skills, making her perfect for taking on bosses like the Fire Knight and shutting down those super tough arena teams. You can get Ronda for free right now. Just play Raid for seven days between now and February 20th and enter the promo code RAIDRONDA in game so all of these goodies can be yours. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click on my link in the description or scan my QR code right here on the screen. You'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Tyrell, 200K in silver, one energy refill, and one XP boost, and one ancient shard. So you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here at 12daysofraid.polarium.com. What do you guys think of cutting weight? Do you have an opinion on that? You know what got me thinking on this is Cheeto Vera was talking with Michael Bisping yesterday, and he said that cutting weight was cheating. Something along these lines. And then he talked about himself. He said, I cut to 135, and I cut down from 150. He said, I cut a lot of weight. He said, Aljo cuts even more weight than me. So I was a little bit confused. I mean, he wasn't like against weight cutting, but he still brought up this topic. I was just wondering what you guys thought. Because I have very different opinions. It depends who I'm talking to. I had my own experience. I was a wrestler. And I was the young one in my family. I looked up to all my cousins. But I was also the youngest one. So I had been to their state championships, and I seen some of them wrestling in college, and I watched all these events. They all cut weight. I thought that's what wrestlers did. They had the swollen up ears called cauliflower ear. I wanted my cauliflower ear. I just thought this is what wrestlers did. So I get to a tournament, it was called the Classic, the Oregon Classic, which for age group wrestling, very big deal in our state. And I was a little bit over. I was three quarters of a pound, I believe. I was trying to get down to 75 pounds. But weighing 75 and three quarters, no, I don't mean 175, just 75. But being 75 and three quarters moved me up to 80 pounds. So I took my sheet back. I never, never cut weight before. Never tried to drip out a sweat thinking about the scale. So they mark your sheet and they put it in a basket and you leave and you come back a couple hours later and the parents, parents room or we call a bracket room has you all matched up. I took the sheet back. I took the sheet back. I didn't let them write 80 pounds on there. And I went back to my dad. My dad walked me in. You know, he's got to pay the entry fee. And it was one of these things. I was so young. I had to be uh, accompanied by my dad. I wanted to have even known what to do. And I said, I, I've, I've got to lose some weight. And I put all my gear on. It's my first time cutting weight. Now, I had never done that before, but I was very proud. I got my hood up and I'm skipping my little rope. And every now and then I'm walking over to a garbage can and I'm spitting. All these things that I had seen. And it took me a meaningful amount of time. You know, it's, it's very hard to get a sweat going. And as much as three quarters of a pound might sound like nothing to you guys, well, when you weigh 75 pounds, it was a little bit difficult. So I get done. I get done. I go back. I take all my clothes off. I get up there. I give them my sheet, 75 pounds. They ride it right on my shoulder. I walk back to where my dad is. He said, you feel better? Do you feel good? Are you glad you did that? I said, yeah. He said, that's a chicken SHI asterisk move. And I was stunned. I said nothing back. I couldn't believe he said this. I did everything right. I did what wrestlers do. I went and cut weight. I got to the nearest weight. He said, you didn't cut, you didn't lose that weight to wrestle somebody. You did that to not have to wrestle somebody. And he was right. He was right. The kid at 80 pounds was from USA, Oregon. His name was Isaac Wood. I did not want to wrestle him. Isaac Wood, rest his soul, by the way. I went down to 75 to get away from him. That's true. It's very true. And I never cut weight again. 
I got into high school. My senior year, I weighed 173 pounds. I wrestled at 185. When I got into college, I weighed 188 pounds. I wrestled at 197. I never cut weight again. All my teammates were cutting weight. I never did it again. I got into the UFC and you start to get contracts, right? Now I'm taking the testosterone, getting bigger. I mean, there was a time in my life where that was no longer true and I had to get some weight off. But I'll just share with you, it's an American phenomenon. Cutting weight is an American phenomenon. If you go to the European Championships or you go to the World Championships, you go to an intercontinental championship where you're outside of the States, they don't cut weight. Those guys will wake up never having missed a meal. They'll wake up and they might be four pounds over, but they're fully hydrated. They got all their energy. They'll put their gear on. They'll go, go, go get that off in about 30 minutes. But the Americans will have started 30 days before and they're pulling their weight down. And I can't tell you why it's an American phenomenon. I, I don't have an answer to that. That was brought to my attention by Randy Couture. And I stood back and I have thought about it many times. Why don't you just fight at what you weigh? And that's not a perfect answer, by the way, for everybody. I was the teammates with a guy named Doug Lee, but Doug had a specific number. Doug could beat anybody in America. Ask Brad Varian, ask Daniel Cormier twice. I mean, he could beat anybody, but he had to do it at, at a specific weight class. And what Doug's number was, what his weight class represented, it, it helped to represent his cardio. To get down to that weight, there was just certain things he had to do. There was certain running, certain conditioning that he had to do, and the weight class was a byproduct. So I, I do understand these things, but why are guys cutting from 150 pounds? If you weigh 150 pounds, I would fully understand why you don't want to fight 155 with guys pulling down, but why wouldn't you go 145? I mean, I think that Cheeto brings up an interesting point. I don't know how Cheeto would do at 145. But I can tell you, it would appear that he doesn't believe he would do as well as he does at 135. I, I guess it's something that would have to be tested. And everyone's got their number, but not everybody finds out what that number is. You get locked in. Why are you a 35 pounder? Well, I'm a 35 because I've always been a 35 pounder. Well, yeah, but that started six years ago. You, six years ago, you weighed 135. Why are you still at 135? And it's just something, guys, they don't even think of it. They don't even think of it until I would just ask them right now. And we see some guys doing better with the size. I'm fully convinced that Daniel Cormier was a better heavyweight than he was light heavyweight. And he was the champion of the world at light heavyweight. But he was champion of the world at heavyweight as well. Which Daniel did you think was better? I, I thought heavyweight Daniel was. And I bring, I bring some of this weight discussion right on the eve of us really getting ready for Volkanovsky. Makhlchev. It seems so far away, right? 2023 and it's the end of February. We're, we're like three days away from being in 2023. We're three days away from that fight being next month. And a lot of the talk on it is that Islam's going to beat him. Islam's going to take him down. He's going to keep him there. He's going to beat him up when he gets him there. Now, that is what Islam does to people. But Volkanovsky doesn't get taken down, and he doesn't get held there, and he doesn't get beaten up. So we're going to have to see something new, but that's okay. It's all okay. It's all okay when that happens to Volkanovsky. He'll still be the champion. He'll still have 145 pounds to return to, and he was too small in the first place. Maybe. That's between those boys. They're going to have to go out and do that. And that might exactly be what the case is, but maybe not. Everybody has a number. And it's not very often that they ever test it, that they ever move around, that they ever have the option to. You got a, a high school wrestling team, boom, I'm expecting you in this spot. Coach needs you there all season long. You go up or down, you go anywhere but sideways, you throw the team off. You get into college, you're getting scholarships, you're getting paid to fill this spot. You get into the big leagues like the Ultimate Fighting Championship, you're going to get into a category. And you're going to start fighting for contention within that category. You can't just change. We don't see it very often. Volk is being given a very unique opportunity. I just want to call this to your guys' attention now. What makes us so sure that he's not going to do better at 155? George St. Pierre, when he moved to 185, boy, he looked good. 
Daniel Cormier, a fine example. That's a personal experience. Feeling him. Grabbing a hold of him, working out with him at 205, doing the same thing at heavyweight. I thought that was his number. And everything's very obvious in hindsight, right? We, we, we keep on insisting that Volk is too small. We keep saying that. But every time Volk's got a fight coming up, we talk about the fact that he used to play rugby and that he weighed 211 pounds when he played rugby. It would seem as though he's going to have more energy. It would seem as though he's going to have more effort and energy to put into the actual sport and the dynamic strategical techniques he needs to do to beat this opponent and not have to worry about getting in the sauna, not having to worry about skipping that meal. It would, it would just seem. You've never seen him at 155 pounds. You don't know how he looks at 155 pounds. It's a little bit of food for thought, but counting out this smaller guy or guys that are trying to cut weight to get a fight, I'll just share with you. And I'll throw myself into that mix. It's not sometimes. It's not part of the time. It's 100% of the time. You do not lose weight to fight somebody. You lose weight when you're trying to avoid having to fight somebody. 